The James Webb Space Telescope, better known as JWST, stands today as humanity's most ambitious and sophisticated observatory ever placed in space. Orbiting nearly a million miles from Earth at the second Lagrange point, it peers into the universe with infrared eyes capable of detecting faint light that has traveled across billions of years. Its mission is nothing short of revolutionary. JWST is designed to investigate the mysteries of our solar system, examine the atmospheres of distant exoplanets, and push further back in time than any telescope before it, revealing the earliest galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. In essence, it allows us to look both outward into space and backward into time, rewriting what we thought we knew about the universe. Recently, JWST directed its unmatched instruments toward a celestial body lying approximately 120 light-years away from our world. For comparison, that is about 707 trillion miles, an unimaginable distance, yet still close by cosmic standards. The object of interest was an exoplanet known as K218b, a world that orbits a cool red dwarf star within the LEO constellation. What the telescope uncovered has stunned astronomers and ignited a wave of excitement across the scientific community. For the first time, JWST detected clear and convincing signs of carbon-based compounds in the atmosphere of this distant world. These included methane and carbon dioxide, molecules that on Earth are deeply intertwined with biological and geological processes. The discovery suggests that K218b may be an ocean-bearing planet raising the tantalizing possibility that it could host conditions suitable for life. But how did scientists make such a groundbreaking revelation? To understand that, we first need to explore what K218b actually is. K218b belongs to a category of planets that do not exist in our solar system, a sub-Neptune. With a mass about 8.6 times that of Earth and a radius 2.6 times larger, it falls between Earth and Neptune in size. These so-called sub-Neptunes are among the most common types of planets in our galaxy, yet their composition and nature remain mysterious, precisely because we lack a direct counterpart nearby. Is K218b a scaled-up version of Earth, with oceans and perhaps even continents beneath its skies? Or is it more like a mini-Neptune, with a dense, high-pressure icy interior capped by a thick hydrogen atmosphere? Joost's observations hint at something in between. Its instruments revealed a hydrogen-rich atmosphere containing both methane and carbon dioxide, while notably lacking ammonia. This chemical balance strongly suggests that beneath its skies, K218b may conceal a massive liquid ocean. That ocean could be global, stretching across the entire surface of the planet. Even more intriguing, early signals hinted at the possible presence of dimethyl sulfide, a compound known on Earth to be produced almost exclusively by marine plankton. While this detection still needs further confirmation, the mere possibility of such a compound existing so far from Earth is extraordinary. On our planet, dimethyl sulfide plays an important role in cloud formation and climate regulation, making it one of the many invisible threads linking biology with atmospheric chemistry. If it is truly present on K218b, it could represent one of the strongest biosignatures ever detected outside our solar system. Yet, scientists caution restraint. Just because an exoplanet has carbon-bearing gases, or even an Earth-like molecule, does not mean life is guaranteed. For one thing, K218b is much larger than Earth, and with its greater mass comes greater pressures deep within its atmosphere and possible ocean. Its environment may be far harsher than our own, perhaps too volatile for life to emerge or survive. Some models suggest the ocean, if it exists, could be buried under layers of ice or compressed into states unfamiliar to us. In short, K218b may offer the chemistry of habitability without the reality of it. Still, the importance of this discovery cannot be overstated. For the first time, scientists have built a highly accurate atmospheric model of a sub-Neptune exoplanet in the habitable zone. This was accomplished by studying transits, the moments when K218b passes in front of its star. As starlight filters through the planet's atmosphere, certain wavelengths are absorbed by different gases, leaving behind telltale chemical fingerprints. 
Joost's infrared spectrographs are so sensitive that they can detect these fingerprints from light that has traveled more than a hundred trillion miles. It is, in many ways, like trying to determine the makeup of an unseen perfume by studying the way it colors a faint beam of light, and yet, JWST makes it possible. The work on K218B is only beginning. Future studies using JWST's mid-infrared instruments will allow scientists to probe deeper into its atmosphere, testing whether dimethyl sulfide is truly present and building a clearer picture of the planet's climate and environment. These studies are part of a broader scientific goal, the search for biosignatures, chemical clues that could indicate the presence of life. But K218b is just one chapter in JWST's expanding story. Beyond the realm of exoplanets, the telescope has already delivered discoveries that push the limits of our imagination. For instance, astronomers using JWST detected complex organic molecules in a young galaxy that existed when the universe was only 10% of its current age. These carbon-rich molecules, known as aromatic hydrocarbons, are similar to substances we find in coal, oil, and even urban air pollution here on Earth. The fact that such intricate molecular structures appeared so early in the universe's history challenges existing models of cosmic evolution. How could the universe have generated such complexity in such a short time? To put this into perspective, the light we now see from that ancient galaxy began its journey about 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. Since the universe is around 13.8 billion years old, this discovery lets us glimpse a period closer to the universe's infancy than ever before. Even more astonishing is that the galaxy, designated SP41847, had already grown to a mass comparable to our own Milky Way, producing carbon and oxygen in surprisingly high amounts despite its youth. Such findings force scientists to rethink how quickly galaxies formed and evolved in the early cosmos. The uneven distribution of these molecules within the galaxy is another puzzle. Why do some regions contain them while others do not? Could this pattern reflect variations in star formation, or might it suggest processes we do not yet understand? Questions like these show how every JWST discovery opens new mysteries even as it provides answers. Taken together, these revelations highlight the transformative role JWST is playing in modern astronomy. It is not just a telescope, it is a time machine, a laboratory, and a philosopher's mirror. By peering deeper into the universe, JWST compels us to confront questions humanity has asked for millennia. Are we alone in the universe? How did life begin? What is the destiny of the cosmos? Each discovery, whether it be methane in the atmosphere of K218b or aromatic hydrocarbons in the dawn of galaxies, brings us one step closer to answering them. Even if life is never found on K218b, the fact that it exists with oceans, carbon, and hydrogen-rich skies shows us that Earth is not alone in possessing the ingredients of habitability. And if life, or its chemical precursors, can exist elsewhere, then perhaps it is not a cosmic rarity but a natural outcome of the universe itself. As JWST continues its mission, we stand at the edge of an era where science fiction increasingly blends with scientific fact. We now have the tools to explore atmospheres of distant worlds, to chart the birth of galaxies, and to detect molecules that may whisper of alien life. Humanity has never been closer to uncovering the hidden truths of the cosmos.